image bearers of God, humanity, citizens of this great nation, America, raise your voices and sing to the Lord Almighty, for He is worthy. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. How his kindness yet pursues me, mortal tongue can never tell. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Take and seal my, here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. On that day when, freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face. Clothed and in blood, washed linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry, take my ransom soul away. Send thine angels now to carry me to realms of endless day. Endless day, folks. Eternal salvation from a God who even now reigns in heaven. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth was born of a virgin. God Himself taking on flesh to live a perfect, sinless life. 33 years of righteousness that are now accounted to me. And yes, I tell you very clearly, His righteousness is accounted to me. I have none. I have no righteousness of my own, I have no confidence in my flesh, but I have confidence in Christ. That He who died on the cross over 2,000 years ago took my sin on Himself and has given, given me His righteousness. And I tell you today that if you turn from your sins and turn to this risen Savior, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you will be saved and not perish. But I also warn you that if you resist the call the command to repent and believe. If you resist the Lord God Almighty, you shall enter into eternal life of suffering. Not endless day, not endless paradise, but endless suffering and gnashing of teeth. But today, if you turn to Christ, you will be saved. If you turn to His Word, if by His Spirit you are born again, that you will be saved. Today is Memorial Day, folks. And I want to say, praise the Lord, thank God for those who gave their lives that we might live. The veterans of this great country that was founded on the idea of freedom. Freedom from enslavement to rulers of this world. Freedom to enslavement of one man, a monarchy, tyranny. And we tell you today that unless you serve Jesus Christ, unless you serve the Lord God Almighty, you are under the tyranny of sin. But today, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be set free from that tyranny. You'll be... So back again, I want to mention and give thanks to the veterans of this great nation. I myself served in the Air Force. Many others served. Praise the Lord for those who, who signed up for this military and said, I will die for my country. I will die for my brothers and sisters, my people. For you are truly my people. You are image bearers of God as we all are. 
but as image bearers of God, we have to face God. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit and of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And all creatures, all humanity, is naked and exposed to the eyes of Him with whom we must give an account. So today, we're not bringing to you a message that is new. Today, we're not bringing a message to you that you haven't heard before. But if your ears were hardened to the truth, if your heart is calcified by remaining sin, we tell you today, turn to Christ. You don't longer have to live under the tyranny of sin. But just as the veterans died for our country to, so that you could live in freedom on this earth, in America, so Jesus Christ died in a greater way, much, much greater. Jesus Christ died for your sins that you might be set free from the tyranny of Satan. For this reason, he was raised on the cross. The Word of God also says that since therefore the children, since therefore humanity share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things. That through death, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through the fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Again, I want to draw attention to the veterans of our country, to those who died for our country. They faced death for you. They died for you that you might live. And praise God for those folks that would do that. For the Bible says that greater love is this. This is the greatest love that a man should lay down his life for his friends. And praise God for those who laid down their lives for this country. We must fight for the truth. We must, we must fight against darkness, against tyranny, against lies. And I bring to you today the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, which is infallible, which means that it cannot err. It's also inerrant, which means that it does not err. All Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be fully equipped, prepared for every good work. But I tell you the truth, unless you receive the Word of God, you are in your father, the devil. And this might sound harsh, this might sound unloving, unkind, but it's the truth, so I must speak it. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning since the beginning. But the reason the Son of God appeared over 2,000 years ago, the reason the Son of God came in the virgin womb of Mary and lived that perfect life, raised upon the cross. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And I tell you the truth, folks, Jesus Christ has destroyed the works of the devil in my soul, in my heart. And I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So you might have heard before John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is true. That whosoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life. But I tell you the truth, the very sobering truth, that it's not everyone who says they're a Christian. Because if you are a Christian, confess it before men right now. Confess that you are a Christian. Is there anyone here who's going to confess that you're a Christian? Look to Christ, for he is the Savior of all mankind. So if you say you're a Christian, I ask you to examine your heart, examine your souls, ask yourself, do you love this world? Do you love this world that's passing away? Because the Word of God also says, do not love the world or the things of this world. For whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So it's not that God so loved the world that anyone who says they're a Christian will, will be saved, but it's anyone who is born again. For Jesus told Nicodemus, the most privileged prof, the, the most privileged person at that time who was wise beyond his peers he was raised up and yet he did not understand what Jesus said when he said you must be born again and I'm telling you that this is a Holy Spirit operation many times now when when mothers give birth to the babies they go to the hospital and there's a doctor that performs an operation on them to bring this baby into this world well I tell you the truth that unless the Holy Spirit God the Father planned 
and elected those who would be saved. Jesus Christ came into this world and purchased your salvation by his blood. And the Holy Spirit today brings that message to your ears that you might hear, that you might receive the truth, that you might be born again. And I do say might, because if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled the world to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, I am an ambassador for Christ, God making his appeal through me. So I implore to you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him. Jesus Christ, when he was raised on that cross, God the Father made him sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. Praise God for mercy. But His mercy comes at a cost. His mercy comes at the very cost of your life. So even as the veterans, in the hundreds of years that this nation has been founded, even as the veterans sacrificed their life, I am calling you today to give up your life, to come to Christ at the cost of everything, at the cost of man's opinion, at the cost of your family, at the cost of your fortune, come to Christ and live. But if you do not come to Christ, laying down all of your righteousness, laying down everything, then you have not come to Christ, my brethren. I tell you very clearly that if you've said a sinner's prayer, if you've confessed God before man once, and you go home and live a life of sin, if you are practicing sin, then you are still in your sins because Jesus Christ delivers us from the penalty of sin. Yes and amen. On that cross, he delivers us from the penalty of sin, but his Holy Spirit indwells his people and delivers us from the power of sin that we might live and walk in newness of life. Praise God for his mercy and kindness. For his word has come to you today that you might hear it, that you might receive it, that you might repent and believe. And Jesus says very clearly in the word of God, in the first chapter of Mark, as he began his ministry, he says, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Repent and believe the gospel. So I'm calling you today to turn to Christ and live. I'm calling you today, repent of your sin. Acknowledge that you have sinned before your creator. Turn to Christ and live today and you will be saved. But it will cost you everything. Do not think that this is a cheap grace that you can just say a sinner's prayer, go home and continue in your sin. Because I tell you the truth that you are still in your sin. And I'll remind you again of the text where I talked about before. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. Are you practicing your sin? Are you living your sin out proud? Are you, are you promoting sin to your neighbor, to your family, and to your friends? Then you are of the devil. And the truth of the Word of God is, is sharp. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit and of joints and of marrow. I do not bring my own thoughts, my own intellects, but I bring the very word of God that you might be pierced to the soul and born again and receive the truth. Turn to Christ and live, folks. This is my message. This is my hope. This is my plea that you would turn to Christ and live. Yeah, my name's Trevor. Yeah, God nice bless. Trevor. Want to take one of these? Huh? Thank you. It's a piece of art and it's got the gospel on the back. All right, sweet, thanks. Yep, have a good day. Live in Christ, young man. Go with Christ. Look to Christ. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Yet again, he's like, I have no man. I've got a whole bunch of those. You give them to me all the time. Yeah, cool. Be set free to live. Truly live.